Now, listen, I want to talk about something. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. I was going to bring it up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Michael Crizzo. Yes. He so is, you saw him in person. He's the real deal, okay? So I'm going to go on record right now and tell you guys, if this guy wins his pro card in the IFBB Pro League, Yes. Because he's still an amateur. He's an amateur. So he's going to do the amateur prog. Prog, and then hopefully do the pro the next day. Okay. If he, I feel he can win the amateur, he can win the pro, and he can get instant qualification for this year's Mr. Olympia. Okay. He's going to be a. All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, we're going to talk about the Tampa Pro a lot in this video because right now we're just two days out from that show. It looks like it's going to be pretty exciting across multiple categories. One of the guys that I'm excited to see here back on stage is Keon Pearson. Now, Keon is obviously trying to win a show, qualify for the 212 Olympia. Um, he's made a lot of uh, back and forth between classic physique and 212, but now he's settled on 212. He wants to get back to that 212 Olympia stage and improve upon or get some redemption from the last Olympia that he did. Now, during this specific Tampa Pro prep, Keon has posted a lot of lower body updates. And I think one of the reasons for that is that was the main area that I think a lot of people criticized. That's what a lot of people wanted to see him improve. Conditioning and size in the lower body um, is something that 212 seems to focus pretty heavily on. And in these updates, you can see he's very vascular. He's got some striations in his glutes, very separated quads. I don't know if I would say they look bigger, but he looks like he's in really good shape. And that's the thing that we want to see from Keon. That's the thing that we didn't so much see on the Olympia stage, and I believe he was uh, he was going through a lot during that Olympia prep, and I believe he had some kind of stomach bug or something during the week of that threw off his conditioning on the Olympia stage. But even if you go back to his uh, Chicago Pro victories in 212, his conditioning was good, but it wasn't great. In 212 is one of those divisions where conditioning is very, very important. I think the weight cap has a lot to do with that. If everybody weighs about the same, one of the most competitive aspects of that competition is going to be the variance in the different levels of conditioning. And Keon also says in this update at two days out that he is 203 pounds, so he's almost 10 pounds under that weight limit. And probably by the time he's fully depleted and weighs in, he'll probably be more than 10 pounds under that weight limit. But he's still got to fill, <coughs> fill out, and that's what he says in this caption. He says, still getting better, can't wait to fill out this frame, loving the process, and his coach, of course, is Patrick Tour. But I think the guy that Keon is going to have the most trouble with in this lineup is Kareth Bajo, last year's Tampa Pro champion. He posted pretty much the same update that Keon did showing off his legs, and you can see a pretty significant level of size and conditioning. Um, I, th I would think size more so is, is the thing that he has over Keon in his lower body. A lot of development um, in the quads and hamstrings compared to Keon. Keon's legs are looking pretty good, but Kareth's are looking pretty damn, pretty damn dangerous. And he is the returning defending champion, so Keon would have to dethrone him to win. And Kareth also posted this upper body update a few days out from the show. You can see his upper body is looking pretty insane, too. Great midsection. He's looking vascular. He's looking full. I think this is going to be a battle between Keon and Kareth for this 212 title. Um, those, to me, look like the best two guys in the lineup. Speaking of the lineup, let's go over to the scorecards here. Not the scorecards, but the competitor list that has came out so far so we can get an idea of who's actually competing here. So in men's open bodybuilding, You've got Morgan Asti, Eddie Bracamontes, Tim Budishim, Phil Klahar, Roman Fritz, Dorian Haywood, Henry Jackson III, Shung Cho Lee, Joseph Mackey, An Nguyen, and Akeem Williams. You go over to the 212 list. You've got Kareth Bajo, Ivan Cabrera, Peter Costella, Sealy Cruz, Stephen Didishak. Steve Didishak, the guy that uh, we talked about a few a few months ago in the videos when he won his pro card. Maybe it was maybe it was a year ago now. Um, Cody Do Cody Drobot, Ahmad El Sadani, Nathan Epler, who I also think is going to be very dangerous in this 212 lineup. He was a top uh, finisher at the Olympia. Nathan is from Indiana, and he's one of I, I really think he's gonna he's gonna really impress a lot of people here. Jordan Hernandez, Kevin Johnson, Jason Joseph, John McGovern, Francisco Mercado Jr., Darius Milton, Ricky Moton Jr., Derek Austin, Keon Pearson, Eric Ramirez, and Emmanuel Rodriguez. So a pretty big 212 lineup. Um, but like I said, the names that really stand out to me are Kareth, Keon. Nathan, um, let's see, who, who am I missing here? Ricky, Ricky Moton Jr. is pretty good. I'm excited to see Cody uh, Cody Drobot back on stage. Steven Didashak, I think, will be interesting here. 212, honestly, is looking a little bit more competitive than men's open here, so I think it's going to shape up to be a really good 212 show uh, for the Tampa Pro. Now, next up in the news, we've got another update from Samson Dowda, and Samson has really been uh, stirring up some conversation with the, the body weight that he's been posting in the offseason, his most recent body weight. 
147.2 kilos, which is 324 pounds in the offseason. These are like big Rami numbers for Samson in the offseason, and he's got a very aesthetic physique. And I know I say this all the time because I said it a lot with Big Rami, but the number on the scale really doesn't matter. It matters how you look on stage. And it is impressive that Samson is weighing 324 pounds and he's maintaining the small waist that he's got and the pretty aesthetic physique for a men's open bodybuilder that he's got. But really, you know, at the Arnold Classic, he didn't look like a 300 plus pounder in the offseason. He looks really good. And I think he's going to be really dangerous at the Olympia. But I think these numbers don't really mean a whole lot. And people are getting, you know, really uh, wrapped up in this 300 plus pound number. And I don't think it's really that crazy of a thing. I mean, it's very impressive that his waist is still small at that weight, but he's definitely competing under 300 pounds when he's competing. I don't know. I've just seen a lot of people talking about these numbers that Samson is putting up. And it is impressive because right now, who else is there really? Um, that's like a very competitive men's open guy that's posting 300 plus pound off season updates and still looking pretty good. I mean, no one's really doing it. Rami's not doing it. We don't even know what Rami weighs. And, and who knows, you know, whether the posts that Rami's putting out are recent or not. But it is impressive. And I'm very I'm very excited to see what Samson's able to do at the Olympia this year. Now, next up in the news, this update's from a couple days ago. But this is Steve Kuklo, 2.5 weeks out from the Texas Pro right now. Um, we're about a week out from the Texas Pro. Tampa's this weekend. Texas is the next. Steve says he's 281 pounds in this update. And we haven't seen Steve since this past year's, or this year's, Arnold Classic, where he took third place behind William Bonac and Brandon Curry. We didn't get to see him at last year's Olympia, which is why I'd really like to see him win this Texas Pro. And I don't really know who's jumping in that lineup besides uh, Andrew Jack. I'm assuming that if someone good from Tampa doesn't win the Tampa Pro, for example, if uh, Akeem doesn't win, and Kamal somehow beats him. Kamal wins the show. I could see Akeem going to Texas versus Steve and Andrew Jack. That, that lineup might shape out to be a little bit better. Um, but I really want to see. I really want to see Steve back on the Olympia stage because we didn't get to see it last year. He was top three at the Arnold. The past couple times we've seen him at the Arnold Classic. The past couple times we've seen him on stage, he's really brought the best physique that we've ever seen him bring from both a standpoint of conditioning and size. And I really want to see his name added to that Olympia lineup. And in this update, his conditioning looks really good. Again, this was 2.5 weeks out, so almost three weeks out. You can see a lot of detail in his back, which I think is something that he really needed to work on. It looks like something that he's really improved upon, his detail and definition in the back. Um, and you can see all throughout that mid to lower back, even in the traps, you can see striations in detail at three weeks out. Hamstrings, striated glutes, a little bit striated. Steve really looks like he's bringing it. And the final story that I've got for you guys today, you guys probably saw this in the intro, but on episode 38 of the Cutler cast, Jay Cutler gives his thoughts on Michael Crizzo after seeing Michael Crizzo pose at Gold's Gym Venice in person. So this is a pretty big endorsement from a four-time Mr. Olympia. He says that Michael Crizzo is the real deal, and he says if Crizzo is able to win that pro show in Prague, that if he gets to the Olympia stage, he's going to be a real problem for these guys. And he says repeatedly that Crizzo is the real deal. The hype is real. He says the back, even though a lot of people are criticizing his back, he says in person, Crizzo has the width in his back to where um, he's got the structure and the width to where if he made improvements to the back, he, he could be very dangerous. But even without the improvements, Cutler says that width, that roundness, and that detail would be very dangerous on the Olympia stage. So to get that kind of endorsement from Jay Cutler, and again, you know, I, I haven't seen Crizzo in person yet, but in pictures and videos on Instagram, I think most people would agree he looks pretty crazy. And you've got all these guys coming out after they've seen him in person, like Jay Cutler, which is, I think, huge, saying he's the real deal. Milo Sarsha, Flex Lewis, Dennis Wolf. They're saying, look, this guy is legit. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys think the hype is real with Michael Crizzo? Do you think he can get to the Olympia stage? And if he does, where do you see him falling in that lineup? Do you think he would be a top six guy in his first Olympia ever with the IFBB Pro League? And again, another reminder, if you want to support the channel, click that first link in the description for my Shopify page to buy some official Nick Strength and Power merch. Get yourself a hat, get yourself a shirt. 100% of that revenue goes straight back to the channel, so we don't have to do a crazy amount of sponsors on here. Um, it, keeps the channels, it keeps the channel going. It helps out a lot. Um, so if you just want to buy a shirt to support the channel, that's great. If you can't buy a shirt, don't want to buy a shirt, that's also great. Just click that like button, click that subscribe button, and that helps out too. So I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Everybody's dancing in